Hi everyone, I am Dr. Anjani Devi, Associate Professor, Department of Biotechnology, Vignan's Foundation for Science, Technology and Research. I am taking up the course Enzyme Technology for third year with Techbiotech students. In this first session, we are going to learn about role of entropy in catalysis. Before we go in depth into the topic, we need to know what is entropy. Who have given this concept for the first time? The concept of entropy is first given by Boltzmann in 1800s. Entropy is related not only to the unavailability of the energy to do work, but also it is a measure of disorderness. Just consider water and ice. Water is unstable state, that means the molecules are freely available. Ice is the solid state of water. Here, this ice is having proper structure and it is an ordered structure. When we are moving from the orderness to disorderness, the entropy of the system will be increasing. It will be greater than zero. Now we will go in depth into the role of entropy in catalysis. After the substrate binds to an enzyme, the mechanism becomes more dissociative, going away from the transition state. That is, the volume of the transition state is larger when compared to the volume of the reactants. That is nothing but delta V is greater than zero. And the substrate in the activation complex is going to break away from it very soon. Just I'll explain you with a small example. Just consider an enzyme. Consider this enzyme as sucrase. From the name here, you can analyze that sucrase is an enzyme which is acting upon the substrate sucrose. Sucrose is a disaccharide. It will be containing two monosaccharide units. One is glucose, another one is fructose. These two monomers are bounded. They are linked by a bond and this sucrose molecule is formed. Let us consider this sucrose molecule. This is coming and binding to the enzyme sucrase. It will be binding to the active site of the enzyme. Once this substrate comes and binds to the enzyme, an enzyme substrate complex is formed. This binding of this substrate to the enzyme will create stress on the bond that is present between glucose and fructose. Because of this, these bonds will be weak, they will become weakened and the bond will be broken down. As a result, glucose molecule and fructose molecules will be released as products and your enzyme can be obtained. It will be reoriented, it will be changing its conformation and now your enzyme is ready to react with another substrate molecule. So, this increased dispersion of this energy within this enzyme onwards towards substrate makes delta S greater than zero. The reaction proceeds on the enzyme more quickly now that the bonds in the reactants are more willing to break apart. This will be increasing the rate of the reaction. The enthalpy of the activation is negative. Enthalpy is represented by delta H which is less than zero, thereby increasing the right hand side of the equation. Now your rate is represented, rate constant is represented by small k. It will be increasing. So when you increase the temperature, the rate will be increased. With increasing in temperature, the reaction rate will increase until your enzyme is not denatured due to increase the temperature. And now, upon binding of the substrate, the enzyme disperses at an amount of energy outside the substrate, which is called as binding energy. Thereby, it will be lowering the energy of transition state and decreases the activation energy. This activated, activation free energy is reduced by around 10 kilocalories per mole due to this entropic effects. Correspondingly, the rate will be enhanced nearly by 10 to the power of 7 times compared to the uncatalyzed reaction. The entropy you are referring is nothing but the entropy of activation, that is delta S, which is a function of temperature and volume of activation. So, if the volume of the activation has increased due to substrate binding to the enzyme, the entropy of the activation will be definitely increased. Please go through this video for further information. Where does the energy for chemical reactions come from? Many chemical reactions, even exergonic reactions, require an input of energy to get started. On ancient Earth, 
Before the formation of macromolecules, chemical reactions were powered by lightning, sunlight, and heat from molten rock. On the modern Earth, living organisms, including humans, most often obtain the energy they need from other molecules. Cells use the energy in these food molecules to power chemical reactions. However, the energy cannot be used directly. It must be transferred first to an energy-carrying intermediary, such as the compound adenosine triphosphate, or ATP. When chemical bonds in ATP are broken, energy is released. This process provides the energy needed for chemical reactions which power life. This graph shows a hypothetical reaction between atom A and a molecule containing atoms B and C. The activation energy, EA, is the amount of energy needed to get the reactants to the transition state in which bonds are broken and new bonds are formed. This transition state usually lasts for a fraction of a second. In this example, the products of the reaction are the molecule AB and the atom C. Because this is an exergonic reaction, some of the energy stored in the reacting molecules is released. Often, activation energy can be a barrier that prevents a chemical reaction from occurring, except very slowly. The activation energy for many chemical reactions can be reduced with catalysts. Without catalysts, many of the chemical reactions of metabolism would occur too slowly to support life. Catalysts stabilize the reactants in the transition state, allowing old bonds to break and new bonds to form. Even though the activation energy is lowered by a catalyst, the amount of energy released by the reaction is unchanged. In living organisms, most chemical reactions are catalyzed by proteins called enzymes. The three-dimensional structure of an enzyme is crucial to its function. If this structure is disrupted by exposure to high temperatures, for example, the enzyme stops working. The enzyme binds reactants in its active site, which is specially shaped to fit the reactants. The reactants on which enzymes act are called substrates. In this example, glucose is the substrate of the enzyme hexokinase. The enzyme and substrates are represented here in an artist's drawing. The substrates include the atom A and the molecule BC. The substrates enter the active site of the enzyme. By holding these atoms close together, the enzyme reduces the amount of energy the atoms need to enter the transition state. In the transition state, the bond between atoms B and C is broken, and a new bond between A and B is created. When the new bonds form, the products are released, and the enzyme molecule is ready to catalyze another reaction. Each enzyme is specific for only one reaction. For example, this enzyme could not catalyze a reaction between atom A and molecule BD. The fit between an enzyme and its substrate is described by the lock and key model. The enzyme is the lock and the substrate is the key. Only a specific substrate will fit the enzyme's active site. Another model of enzyme-substrate interaction is called the induced fit model. It proposes that once the enzyme binds the substrate to the active site, the enzyme changes shape slightly to bind the substrate even more firmly. This places a strain on the existing bonds in the substrate, thereby lowering the activation energy needed to break the old bonds and generate new ones. Go through these links in order to gain more knowledge about these topics. And I've given you some questions so that you can work upon. You have a link in which more problems have been given in it. So, you can see this equation also, how it has been derived. In this equation, it was given the relation between 
the rate constant as well as entropy enthalpy with respect to temperature. Thank you.